time. You can't stop it. You can't make it. In reality, you can only lose it. I guess that's exactly what makes a race against the clock so interesting. Rooney takes it! One course, one rider. Fastest down the mountain wins. Winning the overall title is the most beautiful thing in the world. Aaron Gwynn, the World Cup overall winner for the fourth time. When you win it, you're the best in the world. That's it. One run to do your best, top to bottom, as quickly as you can. There's photographers everywhere, filmers everywhere, thousands and thousands of fans there watching. It's a special thing. It makes me feel alive and it makes me feel like I want to do this both for years and years. Stop. I think we may be getting ahead of ourselves. Before we can talk about years and years, we need to talk about now. You know I run the streets, live a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Pride up in my environment. Always keep it cheap, you know I run the streets, live a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. On the UCI Downhill World Cup, come springtime, confidence blooms eternal. Riders boast of off-season preparation. Racers become gobsmacked over their shiny two-wheeled weapons. We come here trying to do a good warm-up race to see if everything is going well. We've just done a big block of testing, so we want to see where the bikes are at, where we're at. But confidence can be like a fragile little flower. If it doesn't get the right amount of nourishment, it wilts away. Just full swap. Here we go, Bruni right now, airing this one out. Bruni with the fastest time of the day. Here comes Bruni, back to back wins a crank. Being able to win it twice means we've been twice on it, so hopefully this year we'll be able to do well again. This year I think uh, we're even more ready and, uh, and I can't wait to race it. Well, this is going to worry Quinn because he looks quick on this bottom part. Here he comes in. Point zero nine six seconds was the closest finish on last year's Downhill World Cup. Typically in that amount of time, a lightning bolt has completed its journey from the clouds to the ground. Everybody loves a close race. Going to a World Cup, it's a unique thing because there's only seven a year. If you mess up one, you mess up pretty much all your seasons. You get limited practice. Second day, you have to do qualifying. Try to build up your speed and your bike setup. Trying to learn and adapt to the track as quickly as possible. So come Sunday, you've done everything you can to go as quickly as you can. The problem with uh, the final run is that you leave and as soon as you cross the gate, it's over. You know, if you do a mistake, it's, it's done. You have to deal with it. I'm probably not going to be dumping the pool today. <laughs> it's pretty slippery down there. It's so sketchy. First day of racing in the year, I don't want to kill myself. You know? okay. oh, 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 no, Lloyd! Yeah! Yes, bro! The announcers call him a danger man. Not just because he rides fast, but because with alarming regularity, he rides fast enough to be in contention for the win. <laughs> in the is, is that how short you came up? The Eternal Privateer. Our Canadian female protagonist is finally getting a shot at the World Cup ride. Did you no, I just, back? I just, uh, I was way too slow. So I was like, if I, do, if I go, I'm going to case it. So I just kind of break, but last two meters. And I ended up in the water. <laughs> Sweet cannonball, bro. <laughs> How do you do this? Isles is the current World Cup junior men's overall champion. And additionally, a young man capable of whipping it harder than a Devo song. Oh, yeah. 
We're in Rotorua and we're here for Crankworks. It's a fun event, but it's also a really good practice event for most of the guys on the World Cup. I'm gonna be like happy whatever happened. We've got Loic Bruni. He's one year, two years running. He's looking for the three-peat. He's the man to watch for. Oh, that's a new line. Something must have happened here. He's not taking that step up. Uh, you can tell right there, trouble for Loic Bruni. It ends up with a 3.04, 17th, 15th place. happy? No. Uh, there was only like one section that I was uh, going to take a lot of risk and I missed it. But today I felt good, so it's... I think we're ready now for Lord, you know, the bike is dialed. I was riding well the rest, so it's, a, it's good for me. Naturally, calculated risk is a necessity. No contender for a World Cup can hope to win without some. But when calculations become miscalculated, downhill can be a brutal game. There's many containers for us, maybe 15 guys who can win the, the race. There's going to be the usual suspects that are up there, you know, Troy, Danny, Gwyn, Menar. After a couple more trips around the sun, Greg Minner will be inducted into the Mountain Bike Hall of Fame. But for now, the three-time world champion is still too busy winning races. Greg is always fast, and when you think that he's done and his results are not there, the next race he'll turn everything backwards and win the race. But this is Greg Minner, he comes down to the line, this is going to be incredible! If beating the clock is a puzzle, last season England's Danny Hart was a rider who finally figured out how to put the pieces together. Danny has been really good last year. He was consistent and he was able to do really good runs. Danny Hart, he smashes the time! One, two, three wins. His best World Cup season ever. But last season, one thing that neither Minna nor Hart were able to capture was the World Cup overall title. For the women, that overall accolade went to Rachel Atherton. Behind the charming smile and the disarming British accent is a lady who simply knows how to win. Every race I'm like, oh my god, is it going to be this race where something goes wrong? And then it hasn't, and, and I've won every race. After the third or fourth time, you're just like, damn it, like she won again, but then you're like, whoa. What doesn't mean that I can't do that one day? For the men, the World Cup overall last season would belong to America's Adam Green. That trophy would be added to the three other World Cup titles, currently slowly collecting dust at his home in California. Aaron is one of the guys who I think of when I train. When I want to beat someone, you know, it's Aaron the first one that comes in my mind. If I had a time machine, there are many, many things I would go back and do differently. If Loic Bruni had a time machine, he might decide to roll back the clock a year to the first race of last season. The first race of the year is always the most difficult for me. You go there and you have a lot of pressure, especially Lourdes, it's in France, you know, you have all the fans, all the sponsors, they're waiting for you to do a big thing. Bruni makes his bid. What can he do? So Bruni's in touch, he's up, he's up, it's great! It's great by two seconds! This is unbelievable! I had some close call uh, all the way down, so instead of coming myself, I just kept pushing, and I ended up on the ground. Ah, he goes down! Bruni goes down! And Bruni has taken big risks here, and he's paid the price! This is what we do, you know, I don't want to win a race or be second because I didn't take all the risks I needed to take. Crosses the line then in 14th place, so close to taking the win. That last year I gave a little bit too much of commitment, but I think this year we're going to get him, Aaron, and everyone. <laughs> the time for talking has officially drawn to a close. The time for the first race of the season is upon us. How's the cliche go again? Time waits for no one, right?